The next episode of The Commercial Break starts now. Brian, grateful for your time Hi, this Brian. morning. Hey, guys. Hey, congratulations oh. on uh, 11 years of the roast battle out there in L.A. last Happy night. Happy birthday the show. Happy to birthday, you. glory holes. That's <laughs> us, man. We are, uh, yeah, the roast battle's a preteen now. I think uh, next year, Drake is going to slide into the roast battle's DMs. So. Oh. Hot take. That's <laughs> Let's roast. Now. She's going to start wearing Let's those. Let's roast. <laughs> Let's get it on. <laughs> Not for us. Um, yeah. <laughs> for, uh, for 11 years, you have been doing this. So, Brian, for those of uh, our audience who may not understand what the roast bat, I mean, everyone's seen a roast, obviously. It's been it's a hugely popular comedy format. And uh, tell us how this how you got started, because you are the man behind the machine in some sense, or what I understand. The president. Yeah. El president. So about 11 years ago, literally to the day, uh, I was running this open mic at the comedy store. I was a door guy there. I was working there. And then uh, we had lost an open mic night. They call them potluck nights. So I used to run two of them, Sunday, Monday. And I got rid of Sundays because they were losing so much money. They were like, we have to put real shows with real comedians on. I said, you idiot open biker. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to bring all the real guys back on Sundays. And then, you know, I had just been starting out there for like two or three years. And I was like, oh, I'm, all my friends are going to lose a day. And I'm, like, I'm only going to see them once a week kind of a thing. So I'm, yeah. I'm working here so much. And so then I started this mic on Tuesdays, right around the time Kill Tony started on Mondays. Ah. Yeah, so me and Tony were both working. Um, Tony actually trained me at the comedy store. Really? Um, mm -hmm. I know you guys go way back, like just from, you know, doing my research on, on you. I know that you and Kill Tony are intermingled in ways. But so you guys started like at the same time you guys were doing? Legitimately. I think Tony starts six months before I do in Los Angeles. I start down in San Diego in La Jolla. And he would come down all the time, like doing spots, open up for like big name guys. Big wow. name guys, I guess, like it was what, Jeff Garland and Pauly Shore at the time. But those <laughs> right. <big> <laughs> there was a time when Pauly Shore was not the yeah. weasel and would sell comedy clubs because I it was my very first comedy show was Pauly Shore. And he <laughs> really bummed, he bummed a camel light off. That's me. right. Yes. It's you a weird story, story. But anyway, go, go ahead. So you, cool. and, so you and Kill cool. Tony are kind of doing uh, back to back nights and you, you lose a night and then they, you, you're like, I have to find a different format so I can hang out with my friends. Yeah, it became a renaissance, really. It was, uh, he just wanted to give, no, he had this thing, it was basically, um, uh, it was Hinchcliffe's Notes. That's what it, the original title was, basically, um, of uh, Kill Tony, because he wanted to just, like, give notes to comics who were aspiring and, like, trying to do their thing. Because um, he was the king of the open mic, you know, he's yeah. the king of the back of the room. That's, yeah. you had to kill Tony if you want to go forward, you know, especially oh. at the comedy store. Uh, and then I, I didn't even really see Kill Tony too tough because I wasn't really trying to get an open mic scene anymore. I was like trying to get out of it or just, you know, leave my own open mic. You're so trying to pay your rent? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Open mics don't pay anything. You know, those no. are free things. But uh, yeah, so then I started mine. And then, uh, yeah, we had this thing at midnight where two guys who didn't like each other would want to just like kind of battle each other. And the origin of that is there was an employee there named Josh Martin and a new comic who was underage. We didn't know. Uh, named Kenny Lyon. Oh. And Kenny was very annoying to Josh. And Josh is very <laughs> annoying to everybody. <laughs> so Josh is drunk one night. He comes in. Uh, he's like, hey, that kid on the stage, he's not even 21. He's got to go. And we're like, wait, what? He's been here for like six months. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't shut me down, right? And then uh, I was like, like, and then the kid says, he's like, well, I turned 21 on Wednesday. He's like, and I'm going to come back and beat your ass. And I was like, hold it. Wait till next Tuesday. Do it on stage. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So I wanted, wow. I wanted them to slap box. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that was the original roast battle. I was like, I wanted them to get on stage and slap box Just each other. And who, hit it. Whoever yeah. wins. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Every midnight, we're going to have Last that man slap standing. box. Yeah. Holy shit. then you couldn't have a, an actual fight club in a comedy club. Then we, we had to get like shut down for real. So Right. Uh, because, was Missy running the store at that time? No, no, no. Mitzi was... Uh, she was running it in spirit. Okay. Oh, okay. She had passed away at that point. Yeah. yeah <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. She was. She was still alive. Just her. Just in spirit, she was running it. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. 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 Like Polly and, and Peter and, and Sammy and Sandy. I think yeah. The, the kids were running it at that point. Gotcha. Taking over. Uh. So yeah, she'd never seen it, but um, we had met before. She was. She's funny. <laughs> yeah, by all accounts, a wonderful woman who helped a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, there was <laughs> that especially documentary. In the 80s. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she, I mean, I've never met her, but obviously she. Uh, she's. It's, uh, 
in comedy history, she will oh, go yeah. down. Legend. So, so these two slap box, and then it, like, does yeah. it just kind of like slowly start to take off? People are like, oh, so they don't watch. slap box. They don't slap box. They, uh, oh, I'm sorry, they say, roast. Yeah. yeah, because they, well, they just installed cameras. It's a crazy uh-huh. thing. Like 2013, there was, yeah, they installed like security cameras finally for the first time in the comedy <laughs> store. <laughs> and I was like, and that's the only reason that didn't happen. The only reason that we didn't slap box, and the reason that Rust Battle exists is because the comedy <laughs> store a week prior had put cameras up. And I was like, well, I don't want these guys to see me fighting in here. I'm going to get, I'm going to yeah. get like banned. I'll, You're I'll, like, I'll, wait yeah. a second. We could get sued. And what happened to all the Coke dealers? Why? <laughs> right. Here, yeah, here. where did they go? <laughs> where did they go? <laughs> right. So, yeah. So then basically I said, actually, you know what, guys? Don't slap box. They just put cameras in this thing. How about this? You guys, we're comics. You guys talk shit, you know, talk shit to each other. Yeah. And then since it's like 50 of us in this room, we'll treat it like a Roman Coliseum. And if it's good, we'll yay. And if it's bad, we'll nay. Ah. So that's how it really happened. And then those guys were so bad at it. uh, (laughs) Literally, there was like a line of comics who just emailed me or DM me at the time. We're like, hey, I could do that. Can we just, I don't like this guy. Can I, can I battle this guy? I mean, my friend want to do this. Can we battle this guy? And that's how it happened. Every Tuesday since July 23rd, 2013. We've been roast battling in the comedy store. That's incredible. So that just kind of grows super organically. And now there are, uh, for those who don't know, the Roast Battle League, and stop me if I'm wrong, yeah. has clubs, so to speak, all around the world. And those clubs fight to be the best roast battle of the week, gathering points, and then there's some kind of championship. Uh, whoever, do you guys have like a, a final like roast off? Oh, end? yeah. So this is the second season. So season one, uh, yeah, I think runs from like March 1st to November 1st. It's like the baseball season. It's crazy <laughs> Yeah, long. right. But we get so much content, so we had to make it that long. Sure. We have, and there were so many factions of Rose Battle happening all around the world. Instead of just being like, hey, you can't use it, we're just like, let's just brand it, you know? And if you're good, we'll put you in the league. And yeah. if, you know, if you're shitty, we'll just be like, ah, maybe next year kind of a thing. So there were yeah. there was eight really good clubs we had seen initially last year. Um, or 12 really and then so we said you know what let's make this a league like a league of just roast battling what and so bright, then they would send their content. i know brilliant yeah, brilliant yeah <laughs> it was fun man uh me and my boy pat barker he's the uh the league commissioner he's uh i call him <laughs> the lebron james of roast battling he's just really good at it he knows how to break it down he can he can run plays and roast battle he did. <laughs> he's got the teleprompter he's going yeah. <laughs> look at this guy scared shitless not gonna not brains working overtime he's really exactly. good i've i've watched i now watch a number of episodes of of rbl i really enjoy it because you guys break literally break down the teams every week and then you're you're showing clips or sometimes entire battles like the entire thing you're showing it and then kind of breaking it down and saying well this is why it's good this is why it's bad this is why it's just fucking strange altogether. exactly uh, it's a joke writing it's a joke writing showcase so we get to really just kind of uh dissect joke writing you know why joke writing works why why charisma can work sometimes over joke writing why joke writing can work over charisma right how crowd work or interaction can work sometimes in a roast battle how that might not work in a roast battle how being awkward can work you know, to your opponent how it can create inertia you know yeah. and momentum you know there's there's so many elements of it that's why the roast battle is its own genre of the comedy, you know, uh, a genre. I mean, some pillar in the comedy genre because it really does incorporate a lot of elements. But really, at the end of the day, it's just a joke writing showcase. It's just you and your subject writing about each other. And then everything around you is kind of doing everything else in comedy from uh, stand up setup or sorry, sorry, uh, set up punch. You've got your you've got improv happening. You've got prop comedy. You've got sound effects. There's all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. happening around. It, to some degree, it's crowd work, not necessarily with the crowd, but you're working with another human being and reacting to what's going on in the moment. Correct. And, yeah. And and, you know, I think that roasting when it's done beautifully is you just laugh so hard. Like I some know. of those roasts that you, everyone has seen on uh, comedy central, whatever channel yeah. you've been watching them on, yeah. you know, some of those, when, when it hits, when someone's on a roll and they're hitting and the jokes are well-crafted, it's really fucking funny. I mean, it can be really fuck and brutal, uh, but funny. Um, it's a work of art. Yeah. Subject. Yeah. It's a work <laughs> of art. Uh. Do you do roasting? Uh, do you get up there a lot too? I don't, uh, 
I like the the, the writing element of it. So yeah. we've had so many. Like, so back in the twenty teens, back in the old days, back <laughs> in the when I was a kid, yeah, back when TV was still a thing, back, back in the before glory holes. <laughs> <laughs> Those will never leave. Those will go even no, have. No, no, no. They've been that cat's out of the bag. It's not going back yeah. in. Yeah. No, we'll have AI glory holes. I'm excited about that. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> Sex robot space opera. Next big tent pole movie. I, I, I'm calling it. Yeah. It's coming, and so am I. Uh, <laughs> what was I saying? No, we we're talking about joke writing. Yeah, so really, it's just more about the joke writing for me. So uh, I've done a lot of writing on roasts, right? Like the, uh, I hate to say this, but that Jonas Brothers family roast. Oh, I wrote on that. I saw yeah. that. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the thing that broke up, uh, yeah, what's his name? Uh, not Nick, the other one. Joe. Yes. Joe. And Joe. Yeah. yeah. Joe and Sophie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those Sophie jokes. Yeah, I wrote a lot of those Sophie jokes. Uh, oh, you they did? Were, yeah, because she was the only one that wanted anything like, remotely hard yeah yeah yeah, she, yeah she, everybody else kind of wanted to like kind of be safe and nick wanted to write his own jokes but for the most part sophie was like give me the hardest jokes you have i'm trying to break my marriage up oh <laughs> and then it worked did she, <laughs> obviously she didn't did she say that or she was no, just she like, did. No, no, no. for anything yeah that was the, that was the joke we had in the writer's room was just yeah, like gotcha. oh she doesn't like him like they're not going to yeah. be together very long. If you heard like, that roast, nobody which I did. wanted. Yeah, because no. yeah. it was like me and another guy. Uh, we're just like, I, it was just the darkest jokes, and they were like, nobody's going to take these. <laughs> and then Sophie was like, "What are these? I'll take those." Ah, <laughs> love yeah. it. That's that amazing. Cool. Divorce my roast. <laughs> divorce my roast. Divorce my roast. They should have a checklist on uh, the divorce paperwork. You know, people like in, in irreconcilable differences. You know, infidelity. Roasted me too hard. Roasted me too hard. <laughs> Told right. the truth. <laughs> Told the truth in front of millions of people. I think, uh, I think Joe's doing okay for himself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's fine. Yeah. Uh everybody's ever seen his, you know, his his middle sized penis on the internet. So yeah. <laughs> we had to bring that up a lot. That was tough. Yeah. Oh, I love it, a good Joe roast because my wife loves him. So I I roast Joe all the time on the show. But you know, if you want to come on, oh, we'll talk, we'll talk about on it. Thing. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. It's I'm on, glad I brought it up. Yeah, you did. <laughs> it's good. You you didn't know, but now you know. Um <laughs> But yeah, man. Um so no, I don't I don't get in the in the ring a lot. Like, you know, uh, a buddy of mine who used to be a roast battler, Hormoz Rashidi used to say, Oh yeah, those who can't roast. Host. Uh, host. host. Um, <laughs> I'm hosting a lot and just kind of like doing some things off the cuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, for Roast Battle uh, season one through three on Comedy Central back in 2016 through 2019, I was in the writer's room. Roast Battle UK with Jimmy Carr, Russell oh, Brand right. for four seasons. I was in the writer's room for that. So writing the roast jokes are fun. Uh, actually getting in there and feeling them. I don't want to know things about me that people think about me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, not a, I'm not a gladiator like that. He's yeah. just a gladiator. <laughs> yeah. You're well, the man behind the gladiators. If you were a gladiator, you'd get an opportunity to, you know, pin the dick in the ass. But since you're not, because that's where it all—that's where the glory hole started. But <laughs> for, the, for the listener that doesn't know why we're talking about yeah, glory holes, the listener holes. has no idea why we're yeah, talking about glory holes. We, we had a whole about thing about glory holes beforehand. beforehand. Brian, uh, who <laughs> notoriously spends ninety percent of his time on the internet ignoring his children, uh, Brian well, with the Y, Brian with the Y. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what you say, Brian. Brian spends most of his time, ninety percent of his time, at glory holes. Yeah, so I, that's thought why. I, should, I thought I should clarify. <laughs> I'm old. I couldn't spend 90% Brian of my time. Brian, 7% of my Brian time. Brian with a Y just watches documentaries about, about glory, glory holes. holes. Yes, something <laughs> weird turns me on about a glory hole. Um, <laughs> I, I think the I think the mystique is pretty obvious. Uh, Stick it yes. in and see what comes. Yeah. Literally. Surprise. What's that, Surprise. What's that phobia of like people who are like scared of holes? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, yes, I know about this. I read about it one time. Some people are really like fearful of anything round, like yeah. round holes. They That's hate it. right. Isn't that weird? People oh, no. are fucked up. I think it's all the microplastics. <laughs> I swear to God, I think. <laughs> when my my dad, you know, your dad, everybody's dad or mom or whatever, we didn't grow up and hear like Oprah Winfrey talking about, you know, the fear of holes. You know what I'm saying? There's just like so many manifestations of weird isms that all of these children are presenting now and, and just leave it young to TLC. Adults. Yeah, it's all about it's all it's all fucking TLC's fault. They all point out all the weird bullshit. Yeah. You know, my, if I can get a, if I can put my scientist hat on, I mean, we are a species that's you know made to survive. So I think we're not running from lions, tigers, and
and barriers to make stuff up like, oh my God, uh, this person's love bombing me or oh my God, this person's uh... <laughs> That's a pretty right. smart observation, mm-hmm. actually. Makes uh, sense. I like that one. And, and, you, and you're probably right about this. Like we don't have any inherent fears anymore. We are certainly the alpha. We, there's nothing that we're afraid of except for, you know, white guys with uh, machine guns. And so the... Uh, the, the, the apex maybe, predator yeah the, the apex predator the, the yeah. white man with the ar-15 yeah. oh that's uh, an apex predator right there <laughs> for sure <laughs> um so you, you still do you still stay in touch with tony i i saw i think i saw you on one of his episodes um yeah i was just with tony over the weekend actually yeah he was uh, tony? Or no no he him? was playing just hanging out he was uh doing a club down in san diego and before i went to austin for the weekend to go do uh the arsenal game we said the first ever roast battle all-star game oh, um cool. Before we did that, I was hanging out with Tony in San Diego. He was doing the La Jolla Comedy Store, and he was doing the same uh, one. Yeah, <laughs> where we met. There where we, we go. Met. So when Full he, circle. Yeah. So when he's not filling arenas, <laughs> he's at the La Jolla Comedy Store. So that, it's that kill Tony has taken off. It's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, the La Jolla Comedy Store like fills like two hundred people, but I think Tony had a uh, not a bet, but like a deal with the owner of the club, Peter Shore, and he was just like. If you can get me the condo that you don't give to comics anymore, I will do your club. <laughs> and he's like, deal. He's and like, so they just, yeah, they just like, it's just a free big money weekend for them, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And so oh, he, he did it. He did it for no reason. He just said, yeah, I just, I just want your condo on the beach and I'll do, I'll do six shows. Wow. Yeah. Now, give me the condo like I stay there for the for the time I'm well, there. I mean, it's, or give it's me in La Jolla. Like, give me the. It's condo. just a condo in La Jolla, so that says it all. Yeah, yeah I true. love La Jolla. Yeah. It's so beautiful. you hear it? Yeah. So yeah. this condo, it's like on the it's on Pacific Beach, like right on the coast. Oh, you wake wow. up. I mean, so much nonsense has happened on that thing. I mean, like, <laughs> oh yeah. I remember Steve ran a ZZ and like Sebastian Maniscalco used to like throw like water balloons full of. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what on people? <laughs> it's just the yeah, the stories of just like some of the guys who used to work at the store. I mean, just the things they would do at that comedy at that comedy condo, the Robin Williams of the world. Yes. You know? Yeah, Sam, it's Sam Kinison fucked a fish, did blow off his eyeballs, and then threw it out into the, the ocean. ocean. Yeah, no, no, he fucked the band fish. Yeah. Ah. yeah. <laughs> well, those guys are a little crazy, you know. They're probably yeah. that's probably into something like that. But you're no slouch yourself. I mean, eleven years of doing something consistently at that such a famed iconic club has got to feel accomplished in some some proud. way i mean you must be proud of yourself you had now had two comedy central shows one here and then one in the uk right was uh, the one with russell brand um yeah. were you were you also in, you how did you, how did comedy central did you pitch them the idea did they come to you and say hey let's do this no it took a long time actually uh it was jeff ross so jeff ross comes uh-huh. in about yeah. six months after we start he had a girlfriend at the time who was uh one of our best roast battlers um, and I remember asking because I was, we were friends mutually through, uh, our buddy, Sarah Silverman. Yeah. And, uh, she's like, you got to bring Jeff in over there. I was like, I would love to bring Jeff. So I emailed, she's like, here's his email. So I emailed Jeff and he was like, ah, I'm busy, man. I'm not, I, I said, <laughs> by the way, didn't even know the day I was, I was asking. He was like, I'm busy. Yeah. Like, oh. uh, maybe later. Well, just so you know, it's going to be on this date and, uh, Virginia's battling That's his, his girlfriend at the time. I was like, she's battling. So. Uh, if you could be there, it'd be great. He's like, I'm not going to be there. I'm on the road. And then just by chance, uh, Brett Ernst, who's on Cobra Kai, he yeah, was supposed yeah, to be judge yeah. that night. Yeah. He drops out because he was like, I don't want to do this. He's like, this is late. He's like, what is this? This is crazy. Yeah. Um, and then Jeff Ross came in with his girlfriend. <laughs> had completely forgot he said no to me. Completely forgot I had like emailed him. Came up and said, hey, can I judge this? This looks awesome. I was like, of course you can. Yes, thank you for accepting the invitation. And then, yeah, two of his uh, two of his favorite roast writers, um, Yasser Lester and uh, Benji Aflalo, were both battling. And then the next day, I remember like this yesterday, December eighteenth, two thousand twenty-three. I'm sorry, two thousand thirteen. He hits me up. He's like, "Hey, uh, my show just got canceled on Comedy Central called The Burn, so I'm moving back to New York. But I just saw this show you have." And this is something I haven't seen in a long, long time. It makes me feel like I could put this on TV. He's like, give me two weeks till the new year. And I'll let you know if I want to make this a TV show with you. Wow. Oh, my God. Are you so and then literally, <laughs> like, Jan- January 6th, to an- <laughs> it, was, it was actually January 6th. January 6th, 2.34 p.m. <laughs> it was. It was January 6th, 2014. He hit me up, and it was like, uh, 
He's like, hey, I want to do this. So then we started working on making it a TV show. And then two years later, Comedy Central put us on air. Yeah, well, Sweet. I do remember. I remember watching it, and Jeff, uh, you know, he he's the the, the face of that. Yeah, show, I love Jeff. Jeffrey oh yeah. When, the funny thing is, when you're saying telling me telling us that story, I can like hear Jeff. I know, voice right? Saying <laughs> those things. Yeah. Nah, 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 I'm not available. What do you, who are you? <laughs> exactly. Know, yeah. Yeah, I know Sarah. So does a lot of people. What does that make right. you? You know, I can hear him <laughs> saying that. And Jeffrey Roths is is a is a big deal. So then you guys sell at the Comedy Central. What is the? Did you? Do you enjoy working on television? Like, is that a good thing for you? Do you like the writing and the, the being? I mean, obviously, the probably the money's it's Comedy Central, so I'm not sure the money's not like you know ten million dollars. And there's no money. Yeah, there, there's, money. No money. <laughs> <laughs> there's no money. There's no money. You Central? Yeah. <laughs> what? You don't say. There's a platform. Yeah, yeah. it's a platform. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll say this, B. When uh, when TV was a thing, right back yeah. in the last decade um yeah. it was great i mean it, it you know as, as somebody who's never been on there and you know it, kids you all dream to be on tv right sure. uh it's fun man the whole process magic right yeah. you, you don't really understand the process that you're there and how long and arduous can be people are yelling at you because there's so many moving pieces you know it, there's so everything many personalities depends on everything else and so if you're right, one second late or not holding your end of the bargain they're like fuck dude you're costing us you know hundreds of thousands of dollars you got to get going or whatever Exactly. So, yeah, TV is amazing. I mean, I'll, I'll never get over how amazing TV is. It sucks that it's like, you know, it's not going to be here anymore, but it was great when we had it for 70 years. Mm-hmm. I'm going to I'm going to push back on this idea a little bit. And I talk about yeah. this sometimes on the show. I think television as like the way that you and I grew up television, right? Sesame Street, ABC, NBC, CBS is not going to be around for very much longer. There'll be small channels and certain people will watch it because it's just You know, that's just it. It's got tenure. But I think that all of these streaming giants will soon start to fall one by one because it's really hard to make money. We've we've seen it like Netflix hasn't made money until like three years ago. It didn't make money and they can't just continue to push out billions and billions of dollars worth of content for trying to get everybody. When you try and be everything to everybody, you're nothing to nobody. So it Netflix may survive, but it will be a more traditional channel. Look, they already have scheduled uh, shows now you watch something every saturday night right hbo has gone back to doing the same thing you know disney plus hbo maybe they survive but you're st- i think everybody's going to start plugging in again to some degree maybe it's on the internet or you know direct tv stream or whatever it is to get maybe not necessarily live tv in the way that we think about it but they will have one place where they go to watch all the things and netflix will be another channel and hbo will, max will be another channel because you can get everything on demand. That's that's going to stay. But I think we've proven that paying seventy nine ninety nine a fucking month for seventy three different applications is not a sustainable business model. Because no. well, it's just who going has back that kind of cash? Well, it's just yeah, it's going, going back, back to cable. cable yeah. Right? It's essentially cable. There's a provider, a distributor. It comes to your house. You flip the channel. And if you can get stuff on demand, that's that's a thing that will stay. Um, but you know, I just, I I don't know. I will see, but that's my, that's my prediction because people like what's easy and who the fuck wants 75 different streaming places to go watch. They don't, they don't, don't. but what I, what I mean, what I mean by the downfall of TV, not so much like, uh, you know, the streaming's coming up. I mean, connected TV. I'm talking Mm -hmm. about, you know, like they say the, the demographic 15 to 24, right. Within the next six to 10 years, that will be like the new adults. Um, Mm. 32% of them. Only watch connected TV. That right. means what? Yeah, so over sixty, know. almost seventy percent of them are are, are not watching a, a connected TV. They're yeah. only looking at their TV screen. Yeah, and they only watch YouTube or things like YouTube. They're watching gaming and 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 Twitch and and the other ones. Right? Mm-hmm. They're all watching all those things. I think you're uh, right Rumble. in this sense. Yeah. yeah, I think you're so right in this sense. Is that there are so many places to divide your attention now that like appointment TV is no longer there. Right? It's just Correct. not a thing anymore. So were did you guys did you I just I don't know did you do well in the in the ratings specific to Comedy Central when you guys had the roast battle? The UK did so. I'll say so. Linear overseas still does really well. I mean, we, we still get hit up about like, hey, you think we could do something with America and uh, and overseas because roast battle does really well over here still. Cable does really well. TV does really connected TV does really well over there. That traditional. Uh. Yeah, that's the. If you've talked to you know even Amazon, Netflix, and uh, and Hulu, they're still they're outsourcing a lot of their projects and all their TV over there because the advertising does really well over there because people are still watching TV mm-hmm. like it's classic TV over there. Over here, because we're we're content junkies, we're looking at what's the next YouTube, what's the next totally. Netflix style thing that can be a YouTube. Um, but as far as uh, 
yeah, I, I, it's really just about overseas. I mean, we we killed it overseas, I and mean, we were the highest rated uh, television program in Comedy Central history overseas. Nice. Did yeah. you do you still stay in touch with Russell Brand? No, 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 no. Russell's. Uh, <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. Brian, don't even go there. <laughs> Russell, like, no, no, no. Russell's Brian. Russell's in a bunker right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I saw him in that bunker a couple days ago. He was That's like, right. he's going through a divorce. Right? You Hold, still uh, have contact with Russell? Who does? Uh, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one guy. Like, oh, she found the guy. Yeah, I found we the We were dude. just together last week. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Russell. Oh, you, you naughty, naughty boy, Russell. <laughs> you almost got him. You almost got him. Like, they, we found he him. He came real close. Close. This close, yeah. Yeah. they almost got. They, they, they tried. They listen. Okay, I'll, I'll leave Russell Brand yeah. alone so I don't piss more of my listeners yeah. off. Um, but uh, but I do have to say that at one point Russell was really like explosive and funny. Like he yeah. he really came on the scene and it was like, who the fuck is this dude <laughs> with the yeah. crazy hair and the weird philosophies and you know he had so much fucking energy and I'm sure he was uh, he was good. He was. And he married into oh, Katy Perry, was... Katy Perry. So. <laughs> oh man, he's awesome. I mean, I met him. Yeah, when I met him, he was uh, he was he's the nicest human you could possibly meet. Very smart. You can tell, and you can tell he's funny and very smart because he's analyzing everything in yes. a very comedic way or a very uh, intellectual way. Uh, everything he does, he doesn't really waste syllables a lot. Doesn't waste words. He's very intentional with what he says, um, and he's very dialed in and funny. Like that guy didn't write anything, and everything he said was <laughs> a plus. Wow. When, like like off the wall funny just i mean you, you are you, oh this is why you're a superstar because you're not writing anything down everything you're saying sounds like it could be on a script yeah i and i i i tend to think that like some of the there's like two different types of comedians to me there are people who are funny and there are people who are poignant and funny like dave Chappelle, right he can sit there for 15 minutes on a stool or 20 minutes or 30 minutes and talk about how HBO or Turner or whoever was fucked him. Right. And it can come out as important as a president, you know, addressing a nation. It it's just, it's like as if it was written word for word, but none of it's written. It's a cigarette and a bourbon. Right. And yeah. there are people who's just, there are people in our history whose minds work like that. They see things from a perspective that I think most people, it eludes them for their entire life. But these people are so dialed in, they get it and take away all the controversy around Russell Brand he was one of those people where you could, he would just say stuff and it was like, that's brilliant and funny. Like you have to think and laugh uh, at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. It's it so was good. huge to have him, man. And, and he hadn't been on uh, television in uh, in the UK in like six or seven years, I guess. So it was like his day, it was his return to television ah. in the UK. So I think that's why it blew up like like it did uh, that first that first season. Yeah. Okay. A couple of questions for you. Have you ever had a physical fight happen at one of the roasts <laughs> around the world? I have to know. I got to imagine this has happened at some point. N all right. No. Oh. But there has been physical contact. So there's three rules in roast battle, right? There's uh, original material only. You can't do any internet jokes, no your mama jokes, nothing like that. Um, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> yeah, no, so no Carlos Mencia. <laughs> no Carlos Mencia. That's, that, was the, that was the first rule. It was like, we don't want to hear things we've heard before. We're all comics. We all know exactly what you're yeah, we don't none of that. Yeah. Like go below the surface a little bit. And then uh number two is nothing's off limits except for physical contact. Uh, uh and then at the end of the battle we hug to dissipate any, uh, you know, negative. any of that. Yeah. yeah. But there was one time. <laughs> but there's one time. At there was that, one time. Was yeah. Battle. Yeah. yeah, it was uh Kim Congdon and Jen Sturger. Oh. Now, Jen Sturger's famous because she's the she's the 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 college reporter who Brett Favre showed his dick to. His oh, dick yeah. 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 Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the opposite of Hawk Tua. She's like, I'm not going to spit on that. Thing. Yeah, right. I have no yeah. interest in yeah. <laughs> Whatever that so, is. Put it back Sturgeon, in his hood. Yeah. And Jen became a, a hell of a comic, right? Like, she tours now. And she's very funny. And she's like, and she was willing to do everything, willing to get made fun of, willing to go into roast, was really into roast writing and joke writing. And so she was kind of a staple in the uh, roast battle in the early days. Uh, so she was battling everybody and just like, you know, willing to take all those jokes, pardon the pun, on the chin. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then Kim is obviously a hell of a roast writer. She's been uh, she wrote a couple of the Comedy Central roast. She's been on Roast Battle season two or three, I think. Like Kim's a monster. When it yeah, comes I know to Kim. It. Yeah. I mean, I've yes. seen Kim. I don't know her personally, but so they didn't like each other. And I think this was like <laughs> a hot it's like it's like a, a hot girl beef. Right. Yeah. It's like 
why do they think you're better looking than me kind of a thing? Why, why My thirst traps are better than your thirst traps. Ah. Uh, so they started battling and uh, it was basically Kim had like a crew of like other like hot girls with her ah. and, and Jen came alone, you know? And then uh, at the end of the battle, they hugged or whatever, or they didn't. I think they shook hands and then one of uh, Kim's entourage uh, pushed Jen no. and then... And then Jen called the cops, and then uh, yeah, it was a whole thing. And then oh, people thought the people thought it was called. a big brawl that happened. Yeah. yeah. Why do third parties always get involved with beat? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what does that yeah. have to do with you? Why exactly. you third party? Yeah. You see that at the then, bars a lot. And the only other time I could think of is uh, I was talking about this last night. Actually, it was uh, the local news had missed had messed up and said that um, we had caused a murder. Oh, what? Yeah. So somebody had gotten Jeez. somebody. Rest in peace, this person. But this person, this, there was a beef happening in another show at the comedy store, and that thing had uh, matriculated down the street. And then I, I guess they had come back to the comedy store, and then that guy found him and then shot that guy at the Whoa. comedy store, Whoa. murdered him. Yeah, but because we were the only show going on at the time when the, when the news showed up, it was because of us. <laughs> yeah. God. Yeah. They're like a uh, local the roast. local roast battle uh, causes murder. Turns like, murderous. <laughs> There's only two things local news stations know how to do: bullshit and give you inaccurate weather forecasts. Uh, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure of it. Oh my god, that's yeah. fucked up. So they just it made some random good. connection because uh, yeah. you happen to be in the building doing a roast battle. That clearly this must have led to some kind of uh, drama. Uh, and then were you like the neighborhood nuisance for a while? People were like, I'm not going there. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was like that. Yeah, it was like they were like, "No, I don't want to get shot." Jeez. <laughs> oh God. No, but at that time we were we were still on TV, so I think we were good. I remember that point. It was uh, the Oddball Festival, which was like this huge comedy festival going on, and uh, Jeff Ross, Anthony Jeselnik, and Tiffany Haddish all just like came in on helicopter. Whoa! Like fifteen <laughs> minutes prior, down from down the street. Wow! And, they, and this was like right before this guy gets shot. I'm just like, wow! I can't believe you guys almost got shot. That was crazy. Yeah, and, yeah. But they were like. Why did we come here to right. like to? <laughs> they were like, What's the helicopter going on? touched down and then went back up. Yeah. Why exactly yeah. did we use our helicopter time to come here? Right. Yeah, they didn't know. <laughs> uh, Tiffany had these showing up in a, in a helicopter. That, yeah. That. Is a funny image in my head, but I, yeah. one I could see. Tiffany had these huge star. What is the funniest single? If you, I mean, or. If you can, whatever. The funniest that you can remember right now, single roast you've heard, like single funniest roast line. God, that's got to be tough. Easy. Oh, oh nope. he said I know he had it. No, I knew he had I, it. Yeah. yeah. It's always so on the top it's of a, the uh, Yeah. So there's a an able body battler and a, a not able body battler. Ah. The not able body battler uh, has cerebral palsy. And then the able body guy says this to him He says, Joe is going to hell because there's a stairway to heaven. Ah, <laughs> uh. because the because Joe's in a wheelchair, right? Oh, <laughs> oh my god! So you just got to see like a guy standing up with a guy in a yes. wheelchair saying like this guy's going to hell. <laughs> there's a stairway to heaven. It's just like there's so many great layers to that. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Yes. I was explaining. Yeah. I was explaining to Chrissy what because we were talking about you and we were you know pre prepping for the show yesterday and I was I was telling her what Kill Tony is because I was like listen I you know I know Brian has been a part of Kill Tony or he's been somehow intermingled with with. Kill Tony. She's like, what's Kill Tony? And I said, well, let me try to explain exactly what it is. It's a little mishmash of everything. Um, but I said, what I like about Kill Tony is that there's able-bodied, able persons, you know, there's, there's, so, he, it doesn't matter. It would, if you think you're funny, like all bets are off, I'll get you all just, bets are off. I'll just, give you a couple minutes, do your thing. We'll give you some pointers. We'll let you roast us. We'll roast you all that other stuff. And it's all in good fun and it's all in good spirit and everyone's in on the joke. And then I think that's part of the brilliance is it's kind of the comedy is like a great equalizer in some ways, you know, and like in golf, they'll say putting is the great equalizer. I think that it's the great equalizer in some ways, because if you can laugh at yourself and you can laugh at other people, it's all the same. The laughter feels good no matter what. And um, and, and that's what I can appreciate about the roast scene. And that's what I can appreciate about kill Tony of what you're doing. Cause I was watching some of these people, I think it was in Scotland or somewhere, whatever they were. And it was like, rough stuff i mean they were really <laughs> yeah. going at each other stuff you would not bring up at a dinner party but it was fucking funny and everyone was laughing including the guy 
or gr- the guy at the time who was getting roasted. He was just laughing yeah. because he knew it's just all in good fun. It's a great equalizer. We're here to have yeah. time, you know? Yeah. I, I remember uh, New York during their, um, their internet phase in the 2010s, they had this thing called Roastmasters, right? At the stand. And New York is just, they had this thing, they had this, you just knew a New York style because they were into talking about dead parents or dead siblings. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And they just would attack. Like somebody's parent, like brother or sister would die the day before. That joke was fresh the next day. Oh, and, wow. and it would help those people kind of grieve a little bit, yeah. you know, because because it does kind of just it, it gets rid of this tension inside of you, you know. And we do say this about the Rose Battle. It is that great equalizer in a sense of anybody can get it. Everybody's accepting. We've had everybody. Yeah. Right? We've had people who are with cerebral palsy, HIV positive, trans, um, black. Yellow, brown, women. We've had everybody. You had women? What? I know. Oh, that's I know. really. <laughs> I I yeah. I protest Chrissy coming in here every day. Yeah, There's, you uh, do. I'm breaking we down. No I'm breaking rule. down the walls. Yes. Yeah, I don't know why you're not wearing an apron. I think we but... should roast each other. Oh, we'll roast each yeah, other. Yeah, I think we need. To, I yeah. would love to have you guys on. I would come on and do a yeah. roast with you for sure. Would yeah. you? Would you have us if we decided to come yes. out there and do it? Would you really? Absolutely. A hundred percent. Let's go. I feel like you're a new friend of the show. I would come out and do it. And then I would happily have you back to say, you guys suck. And yeah. here's, here's why. <laughs> oh, I'll, we'll break or, down the battle on your show. Yeah. Or better yet, Chrissy, Brian can pick two people who he thinks are good writer because we're not writer comedians, right? We can each have somebody on our team mm-hmm. that helps us write each other's jokes because we know each other like so it. well. Yeah. And we can go at it. What do you think, Brian? I love this. Okay, we're when? setting this up. When can we do this? Um, this is huge. Next this couple months. Major. We'll yeah. do it in the next yeah. couple months. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Brian Moses is going to have us out. We're going to do a roast battle. Oh, my God. I'm we're so We're going to get excited. someone on our team. We'll get <laughs> no, this yes. is badass. Uh, we're going to get <laughs> one get day on. to prepare. One day to prepare, and then the next one will come in on like a Sunday. One we'll day. have Monday to prepare. Sorry, Chrissy. One day. <laughs> that's it. We. I mean, what do you think? I love it. Uh, Brian and Chrissy battle. All right. I'm excited yes! about this. Yeah. You do guys it. have to do this. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's on celluloid. We got to do it now. Oh, of course, to. there's a lot of stuff we said on the show, <laughs> but not right. this. That's what our show is, though. It's about consent and boundaries, right? So yeah. it's a, uh, your your subject has to consent to the battle, and then they have to consent to the boundaries or things that you can or can't say. Fair you know, enough. You can't say something somebody can't say. Like, or They'll tell you usually. And that's what's so great about the show is we never pit people against each other. It's usually you have to go find your own food, uh-huh. right? Yeah. So like, how do I roast battle? Like, oh, go find somebody who's seen the show and knows the concept of the show, and then We'll get you guys to date. But really, it's about you getting to know this person, understanding their boundaries or if they yeah. have any or, or whatever. And then you go from there. We've, we've been, been friends. About, we've, we've been, been friends, friends for 20 years. Yeah, 20, yeah. Yes. So we, I think yeah. I think <laughs> I get it. I'll probably push the envelope too far at some point. But I'm going in. Oh, you go in. I'm going in. You, uh, listen, if you listen to the commercial <laughs> know, right? break, there's nothing we I haven't said. We, yeah, go we go in. We go in all the time. Yeah. I, the person who roasts Brian the most is Brian. <laughs> so uh, yes. you know, there's not too much you could say that I haven't already said about myself. Brian, it's we are why this show is so successful. Yeah. It, and listen, I, I you know, th- and thank you for that. Um, cool. I... I'm taking, we're doing this. Yeah. We are doing this. Deal? Deal. Done. All right. <laughs> I, I think the audience would really like this, actually. I think the audience would I be like, so this too. will be fun. Oh, yeah. it'll be super fun oh, and very yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah. And then uh, and then we'll have Brian on. We'll do, We'll tape live there. We're going to we'll, bring Christina, too. We'll have Brian too. and a, either a panel of experts or uh, we're bringing Christina. Yeah. And we'll have a producer. panel of experts and then, or some experts, some people who know this world. I'm going to have Christina do. push you. Oh, yeah. End. I'm sure Christina is our executive, <laughs> uh, one of our executive producers. And sh- if you listen to the, like the liners of the show where we transition into the commercial, like, you know, go to tcbpodcast.com, whatever, blah, blah, blah. There's always a one liner in there <laughs> that talks about what a shithead I am. <laughs> she throws it. <laughs> The listeners love it. They uh, love when Christina talks shit about me. So you can have Christina on your side. Okay. I'm getting a professional. I'm, I call I'm Brian. A professional. No, Christina. I call gonna, Brian. <laughs> I call Brian. Christina's going to be part of my entourage. Okay, she'd be yeah. part of your. I, I, I'm assuming my wife would probably be part of your entourage too. Yes. Yes. Ooh. You need some. You need the inside information. Got the heavy limp dick motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> how do they? How do they know that about you? <laughs> my wife. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, oh, the, the local glory hole been talking that's uh, right yes i've got to practice one at my house <laughs> brian we're doing this buddy no doubt we are doing this the next couple of months before uh the before the clock strikes on 2024 mm-hmm. we will have this done we'll wrapped and out to the audience and brian will be can we get a la jolla the roast host what's that Ooh. Ooh. 
Do you want to? Yes. Yeah. We can do it on La Jolla. Yeah. Yes, we did. Let's I want to do it. condo, too. Well, I don't know <laughs> yeah, if we're going to condo. Condo. I don't know if we're going to condo. I don't know if we're going to Brian and Chris uh, here are coming out. Can we have the condo? Uh, Holy yeah. shores. Like you never we'll know until you yeah. ask. If you lend me a cigarette. <laughs> a camel light. Yeah. Yeah. A camel light. It was That was a weird night. But Paulie would, you know, Paulie did his thing. Paulie, <laughs> it was like right out of his weasel phase, right? Yeah. Like right oh. as... Oh, he was prime him then. Yes. Oh, yeah. And he, I was like 13, 14 years old. And my friend's mom owned a local theater here called Center Stage Theater, like, you know, 500 seats, 600 seats. And he came to do a show. And she thought that he was like, you know, the thing that the, the teenagers like, which it was. Well, we, was he on MTV then, he, too? He had either he was on or he had just left. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and so we went backstage and he was there and then we happened to be smoking cigarettes at the time. You know, everybody smoked cigarettes at that time. But uh, 13 year old was it France? Yeah. <laughs> Brian, Atlanta is French. Paris. Yes. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Au revoir. Um, but Brian, uh, yeah. Au revoir. Brian, you can see Brian if you're in, in L.A. at the Comedy Store every Tuesday night. 11 years in running. Please go support our friend Brian Moses. Go to your and website. The crew. Go to your website. That's Brian. Mo What's your website? I want to make sure because there's so many fucking Something Brian comedy. Moses. I know. I know. Brian no. Moses yeah. comedy. Is that? Yeah. Brian Moses comedy. Yeah. Uh, but or just go to just go to the Rose Battle League. Website. Yeah. Go to RBL. Yeah. 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 Rose Battle League website. Uh, Rose Battle League dot com. I think it's called. But uh, yeah, we have everything there. Um, everything Brian Moses for the most part. Don't even worry about that. Go to Rose Battle. That's yeah. all the fun. Go to okay. Yeah. Go to Rose Battle okay. League. RBL on YouTube. Uh, I've spent now a couple of days watching those videos, and they're really they're really funny. And um, and thank you for the invite. We are doing this. So I've got your email. I'll get with you in the next week, and we're going to start planning this out. Yeah, I'll get you yeah. guys some dope writers. I am too. actually really good ones. I'm actually so excited about this. I'm me sure too. I won't be as, I'm sure I won't be as excited three minutes before we go on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be ready right now. You better be ready. Yeah, I'm bringing the heat. I'm quick. I got a fast mouth. All right, but we'll you got see. a fast brain. So we'll together, see. it should be interesting in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> Uh, Brian Moses, my friend, thank you very much for thank you, uh, Brian, for everything. coming on. Thank you for coming on, and thank you for inviting us. We really appreciate great it. conversation. Thank you, Chrissy and Brian. Brian and Chrissy, you guys are the best. Love the yeah. commercial break. It should. There's no. Yeah, should be no commercial breaks. You guys should just go ad free. Uh, yeah. Well, we tried that well, one time. <laughs> <laughs> we tried that one time, and the listeners said, "I'd rather listen to the advertisement than, than pay you." <laughs> That's yeah, right. that, to be fair, that was four years ago. But That's you know, we we shied away from it after that experience. We were yeah. like, eh, it's too much work. Let's just plus you have to put out extra content, and we're already doing this four days a week. How much <laughs> more know. content can we put out? We can't. Four it's days a week. Yeah, My God. Four, four days, days, a days a week. That's. <laughs> Listen, that's why we're so popular is because we just put out 7,000 <laughs> hours of content a day. And you guys aren't married? This is crazy. No, no, best friends. No. If we were married, we'd kill each other. That's yeah. for sure. And maybe we will. After we we get, never even dated. Yeah, maybe there's another murder in La Jolla. We'll figure yeah. it out. <laughs> well, you guys never dated either? Uh -uh. No. 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 Never we worked dated. together, became best friends, and the time kind of – he was married at the time, and – I was um, married. I got divorced. Yeah. We then we hit it. We hit Atlanta hard I for did. about five years. Yeah. And uh, I was dating other people. You were dating other people. Then yeah. you got married. And so, yeah, just always best it's, friends. It's a true friendship. It can happen. <laughs> believe it or not, uh, it can. Happen. So this roast battle will be like the first date. Mm. It will be the yeah. It'll, yeah. it'll be like Chrissy and I getting out all that tension for for exactly. many years. <laughs> Twenty years. <laughs> Twenty years. <laughs> oh my God, our partner, uh, our spouses are gonna kill us. <laughs> they really are. Oh, this is great. I love this. They're uh, gonna love it. They're gonna be so many undertones to this, and it's gonna live yeah. on in commercial break lore. And hopefully, it's entertaining for Brian and his crew too. <laughs> you're Very the best. We'll see you in La Jolla. I will email you. Thank you, Brian. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Brian, Brian and Chrissy. You're the best. Thanks.